Okay, here's the car in the cold light of day. Um, I can go around and I'm just going to try and find any flaws to identify for you. Um, so, starting from here, um, this paint above the exhaust, one day I was idling too close to a wall and the paint melted, which is a shame. Um, a couple of small scratches there, but nothing major. Um, minor paint crazing as you'd expect for a car this age. It's a bit dirty at the moment because I took it out last weekend. Um, So uh, wheels are in pretty good condition, no major curbing on them, a wee bit there. I bought these wheels after I got the car. Uh, you can see the brand new brake discs there, the new brake pads, uh, the centre caps on the wheels need painting. Um, you, can s you might not be able to see it, there used to be a sticker there on both sills on each side of the car and it's left kind of a ghost. I've tried to polish it out but I guess it had been on there many years. It's pretty hard to see though. Um, that's a minor scratch there, probably a ca car door dent. I haven't noticed that before. Uh, I repainted these because the paint was just flaking off um, from a previous attempt at a paint job. Um, I haven't polished them back yet, uh, buffed up, sanded back the clear coat yet. I may have, may not have time to do that. Um, exactly the same for the rear spoiler. It had terrible paint flaking, and now it's been resprayed with color matched, resprayed with color matched spray paint. A few layers of clear coat to sand back on there. The side vents are all nicely intact, which sometimes they're a bit falling to bits. Tires are in pretty good condition. Um, shoulders may be a bit more wear um, than you'd like because it's been on the track, but um, they've still, you know, got five or six mil of tread on them, I think. Uh, same with the back ones. Yeah, pretty good tread on there still, thankfully. <laughs> Never done any burnouts or anything like stupid like that on this car. Um, the rear muffler is this nice shiny JDM spec one Fuji Fujitsu. Not too loud, although I'd still recommend earplugs on a long trip. A little bit of surface rust, but most of the stainless steel is pretty good. see the same sticker ghosting on this side but it's very subtle I took those the stickers off myself um, sills are all nice and straight uh, the paint on same as same as the other side pretty reasonable looking you can definitely sand it back to make it look perfect um, this door does have some overspray from the previous paint job. Very hard to see, but it's kind of an orange. I did get some of it off with a clay bar and some very light sanding. Um, this used to be all covered in overspray around this area from the previous attempt at painting the mirrors. I'm guessing the person did it while they were on the car without covering, masking properly. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that area is not perfect, but you could definitely with some thorough work and some a high quality clay you could definitely get that overspray off um, yeah a tiny bit of overspray on the door glass too which wouldn't come out with the, che the cheap clay I got um, door handles are in good condition they, they often break 
but never had any issues with those. Uh, coming to the front of the car, the window squirters, they come new in body colour. The paint on these has come off, like I guess it's sun damage or something. So they look a bit white, unfortunately. Could always repaint them. Uh, there's, I don't think there's any curbing on this wheel. They're quite grey at the moment. The, the brake pads I've got are uh, Hawk um, HPS, which is quite a dusty track capable street pad. Now one of the paint ish one of the paint issues I mentioned is this front corner. Yeah, you should be able to see that. So it's been like this since I got it. It had a scrape and I think someone attempted to paint it with a spray can without again without doing a proper job of it. So it looks pretty shitty but it is really subtle. Um, this indicator lens is has some surface cracking because of that scrape. Um, it's, yeah, just one of those things that's been on my list and never got around to doing is replacing that lens and ideally you pump, paint the entire bumper unless you're good at blending it. Um, the front marker lamps and indicators are in pretty good condition. Some minor crazing. They're the original ones, of course. Um, it has the original number plate mount which, yeah, a bit of, bit of sun damage on there, but uh, yeah, this indicator's in good condition. The side of the car, for comparison, is perfectly fine. No scrapes on the on there. Uh, now the front lip spoiler. This is the R1 slash Type R spoiler. Um, and I've painted this with black Plasti Dip. So, it was looking a bit crappy, they tend to get really faded. And about probably six months ago or whatever, I painted this with Plasti Dip. It's had a few scrapes just from driveways, but it's really flexible, which is good. It's just, it's not going to break unless you do something really dumb. So Plasti Dip didn't come out perfect, but it definitely looks better than it did. It's a nice matte black. Um, you can see the brake ducts that just kind of direct you in the vague direction of the um, the, the front brake area. Uh, I don't know if you'll ever see, but it's got the oil coolers on both sides. The AC condenser is must be leaf on there. Has is in good condition. Um, I've seen ones that are completely falling to bits before. Um, and the owner's often none the wiser. And you can maybe see, yeah, there we go. That's the intake duct for the intercooler, and that's the radiator up there, which is somewhat new. I put that in not long after I bought the car. Um, the brackets for the factory fog lights are still present, and the plugs for them are just tucked away here. So. I've got them in a box and you can re reattach them in 10 minutes probably. The, the plugs are being covered with insulation tape so they don't get any corrosion. Well, and the cable tied out of the way on the actual mounting brackets themselves. Uh, on the front of the car there's a tiny paint ship just here. That's through to the primer, I think. Um, it's an aluminium bonnet, so no rust to worry about. This one, it has a, a dent. Um, that's a stone that got flicked up at me on the motorway, so thankfully it didn't go straight through the windscreen, because, yeah, it's a nice chip and a bit of a dent there, unfortunately. Really, really annoyed with that. Um, The headlight covers, you can kind of see the cracking. Now they pretty much all do that. They're quite fragile. Um, but the paint's in okay condition. A bit of crazing, but it's okay. Uh, this one's a bit nice around the edges. I'll pop them up so we can have a proper look. Uh, the windscreen 
has a tiny chip, a uh, stone chip there, which has I repaired, and it passes warrants just fine. I got that professionally repaired. Um, the only patch of clear coat um, thinning is on this on the roof just here. Again, maybe a bit hard to see. It's just the thin clear coat I've so this has been like fully clay barred and polished and waxed somewhat in the last few weeks. So it's looking pretty good, I mean, better than it ever has really. Oh and the driver's door has some unfortunate chipping on the trailing edge. Now that is because I have a very narrow garage and I roll the car out backwards before I get in it and I managed to scrape it on the garage door spring. So, yeah, that really sucks. <laughs> um, interior, the driver's door panel, pretty good condition. It's got, I'm pretty sure this is actually sunblock stains. They'll come out. I just haven't cleaned it for a while. Yeah, you know, double foot marks, but it, it's only superficial. Um, the map pocket is in good condition, which is unusual. These are another odd thing that breaks. The issues I can think of, the button that makes the headlights pop up and down manually, the bracket where it attaches to the headlight, to the dash cowl is actually snapped. I don't know if you'll be able to glue it back together or have to replace this front panel. So it still works fine, it just looks stupid. So yeah, headlights go up, headlights go down. I'll leave them up. Original floor mats with a nice brass and stainless badge. Probably mounted fire extinguisher, never had to use it thankfully. Uh, standard pedals. Can get optional, dealer option drilled faceplate for the accelerator as well, but I've never managed to find one of those. The seats are suede and in good condition. These are the Type R seats, you see the Type S seats as well, which has the cloth pattern seats. <coughs> Fabric. Um, factory rear mats. Now the rear seat barely been used. It does have a paint stain. I've no idea why, I've never bothered to try and get it off the vinyl. Doesn't worry me. Um, yeah, I wouldn't recommend putting anyone you actually like in the back seat. <laughs> it's pretty cramped. I'm short, so my driving position you, it looks like you've got a bit of leg room, but not really. Uh, these scuff plates are all nice and tidy. Armrest pocket works nicely. The fog light switch doesn't do anything because the fog lights are not installed. Uh, Demister, that works fine. <coughs> the vinyl's all pretty tidy. Um, it does move around a little bit. Like it wiggles a bit because some of the clips underneath have snapped because basically fragility. <laughs> As is 90s Mazdas for you, right? Um, the gear shifter, I think the previous one of the previous owners wore some big rings because it's got way too much wear considering the amount of Ks this car has. Uh, on there, 54,978 is the current mileage. So that might be a bit over 55,000. Passenger side, we have again. Good condition, standard seats, all intact. Uh, there's a few booklets in there for the stereo and stuff. Uh, the speakers in the back are Pioneer 6x8s, standard Mazda fitment. The fronts are 6 inch Sony's with, oh, what the hell, with component speakers. The tweeter on this side has fallen off for some reason, have to figure that out later. Formats again in good condition, even the bench looks nice. Sony head unit, plug it in with the 
to a headphone jack or USB. I've never used that option to actually play music though and radio tunes to everything. Um, I've never managed to find a faceplate that I'm happy with to cover this so that's just a gap into the, the inner, behind the stereo. Um, this RSM thing, pretty old, the display is a bit funky sometimes but it still works. Shows speed, revs, you can use it to do quarter mile time or whatever but the main thing is to disable the speed limit if you're intending on going over 180. Um, the climate dials all work, the AC works well, um, which is good because it gets very hot in this car. Um, yeah, all the knobs work, hazard light switch. Um, I don't have a cigarette lighter for it, but that works. Uh, dimmer, in and out. Uh, these are all good. Now this gauge cover on here is there's a guy in the US who makes these 3D printed parts for RX-7s called Drake and he sent me one of these and I put my gauge in here. So this shows uh, boost, pressure and water temperature, uh, fully electronic and digital. Um, it has memory settings and peak settings, um, controllable colors and all sorts of stuff. It's pretty cool. Nice and subtle compared to having three or four gauges on the dash. Uh, glove box, I don't know why it's wonk, a bit curvy like that, just always has been. Um, got some spare spark plugs in there, head, u head unit, cover and yeah. That's all right. So, um, possibly the cheapest amp subwoofer combo you can buy, like 50 bucks from JCAR. It's only 120 watts or so, but it gives it a bit of bottom end for playing some my usual rock music. Um, this is quite rare, the, da the boot cover. Um, now I have the original jack, the original tire chock, and a um, yeah, and the original winder for the jack. They're often going missing, of course. It's got the complete original factory toolkit with all the screwdrivers you could want. And there. Um, and this is your tire lever. Now this tire lever doesn't fit because I've got the wheel, the wheel nuts from the old mag wheels. I don't have the original wheel nuts. So you've got to use a different lever. This is the spark plug tool. So I've never had to use it apart from regular maintenance. But if you ever have the old rotary flooding issue, which the FDs don't tend to have, that's the spare tire storage bolt. Um, you can take the spark plugs out on the side of the road if you're really keen and desperate. Right. So factory space saver wheel. I don't think it's ever been used um, and I don't see any moisture in there it's it's pretty much been garaged the whole time I've had it definitely had some been rained on but I've never noticed any smells or or um, anything that would suggest it's leaking still the rear demister works the rear wiper works um, there's a bit of this white crap which is old wax which I've slowly removed as I go with a piece of clay bar though it's pretty tedious and most of it there's nothing on the outside of the car so I haven't bothered ridding it all it's just dried on wax I like those so that's the crack in the front one that's actually worse than last time I looked at it so I guess this bit's fallen off in the meantime that's annoying. Uh, this one's alright though. The engine bay. So, 30 meter twin turbo. The all important extra 5 horsepower. Um, modifications include ready trust stop mount intercooler um, with some nice 
prototype in lieu of aluminium plate ducting made out of cardboard and duct tape. Yeah, it works perfectly fine, but it doesn't look pretty. <laughs> the I do have a battery cover, but it doesn't fit very well with the intercooler, so I just choose to leave that off. Um, what else have we got? The intercooler joiners are nice and new. Um, the, that's the blower valve there. I mean, I've saw the original one. You can switch that out if you don't like it going. Choo choo. Um, I did have a oil catch can fitted for the racetrack. That's what this hose is for. It runs from the breather back to the intake manifold. But PCV system, I mean. Um, but I took the catch can out, and I think I'll probably just put the original thing back in because the catch can leaked. It was a piece of crap. Um, what else we got? You can't really see a lot, I guess. Turn on the camera light so you can see a bit more. Um, that's the oil catch can hoses. Um, I replaced the belts some time ago, so they're pretty much new. Can't see much else on these engines. It's not that fun to work on, but you know, love needs sacrifices. Um, see all the standard airbox hoses, really, apart from the one that comes off the factory blower valve. Um, this is the electronic boost sensor for the dashboard gauge. That just wired that in myself with it going through there. No holes cut, just went through some factory loom holes into the engine bay. The electronic sensor for the water temperature is here and it goes to the uh, water line to the throttle body. For um, So that's just there, never had any issues with that, that's worked quite well. And it's quite a reliable tem temperature system, so that just goes into there through the factory loom hole. Um, can't quite see the spark plugs and leads but they're most they could be considered new as well. Um, what else? 